From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Will you accept a collect call, Mr. Dollar? Huh? It's from Lake Mojave Resort in Arizona. Oh, say no more, operator. Just put them on. Well, yes, sir. Go ahead, please. Hi, who is it this time? Buster Favor, Ham Pratt? Johnny, this is Red. Yeah, well, how's the fishing? Time for me to make another trek westward and find out... Huh? Red? That's right, Johnny. Red who? Well, you know, the guide out here, Red Barrett. The fishing guide? Oh, yes, sir. Who claims to know Lake Mojave like the back of his hand and every good spot there is in it? And I do, Johnny. That's a fact. Then I repeat my question. How's the fishing? Just as fine as ever, if you know where the good holes are, that is. And you do? Yes, I do. So you think it's high time I fly on out there and wet a line, is that it? No, sir. That's not what I'm calling you about, Johnny. Well, what is it? I don't rightly think I ought to tell you over the phone, Johnny. Well, I think you better come here just about as quick as you can. But unless I know why... I'll tell you when you get here. Well, look, I usually do my traveling on expense account for an insurance company. And you can this time. Huh? What company? The one that insured him, the Greater Southwest Insurance. Insured who, Red? Johnny, I'll tell you all that when you get here. Now, now look. They tell me there's a plane that lives New York right at high noon. Listen, Red. That'll get you into Las Vegas about 9.45 tonight, okay? Okay, listen. Goodbye, Johnny. Red! Hmm, crazy old coot. If he thinks for one minute that I'm going to get on on... And yet, on second thought... Hmm. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Greater Southwest Insurance and Liability Company, Kingman, Arizona office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Mojave Red matter. Expense account item 1420, phone call to the Kingman, Arizona office of Greater Southwest Insurance and Liability. On the theory it might be well to check with their agent, Jake Kessler, before going off half-cocked. Hi, Johnny. Haven't seen or heard from you since two years ago when you came out here to investigate the murder at the old Midas Touch Mine. Yeah, I remember, Jake. Now, listen. Yeah? Is, uh, is, uh, everything going along okay these days? What? Well, I mean, no trouble with any of your clients, that sort of thing, huh? Why, not a bit, Johnny. Why do you ask? Just, uh, wondered. Well, if I did have, you know who I'd call. No problems at all, huh? I told you, not a... Hey, just what have you got stuck in your craw, Johnny? Nothing, nothing. I just, uh, well, I just, uh... Well? Oh, well, tell me this. Any of your clients, uh, policyholders, have any kind of trouble, accidents, anything like that, over at Lake Mojave Resort lately? Ah, so that's what's eating you. Well, Johnny, that claim was legitimate. It's in the home office for settlement. The company will pay it, and that'll be that. What claim? So just you stop worrying about it and forget... What claim, Jake? No, sir, Johnny, there's not a single solitary thing for you to investigate out here. So just you... you forget it. Hey, you know something, Jake? You've just convinced me there is something to investigate. So I'm grabbing the first plane I can. Well, Johnny, I'd love to see you, but I swear... What's more, I'm charging my expense account to your company. Oh? And, uh, if you find out that I'm right and you're wrong... Okay, Jake. Then you can shoot the crow and I'll eat it. Expense account item two, $153, plane fare, Hartford to New York and New York to Las Vegas, Nevada. It was 9.45 on the dot as the big mainliner slowly circled down out of the clear starlit sky. Unless you've seen the millions of stars that twinkle brightly through the clean, dry air over the Mojave Desert, you've really missed something. And as we glided down toward the landing strip on the south edge of Las Vegas, the multicolored lights of the fabulous resort town made it sparkle like a vast field of jewels. Beautiful. Yeah, and expensive. 
That is, if you insist on trying your hand at the gaming tables and the casinos that line the main drag. Believe me, brother, I know. But that's neither here nor there. As I grabbed my luggage and started for the car rental office, a tall, angular man, well-tanned and dressed in blue jeans, high-heeled boots, and ten-gallon hats sauntered over to me. Ah, so you wouldn't take my word for it. Mm. Oh, Jake. That's right, Jake Kessler in person. And Johnny, if you're here to investigate the claim on the Hobbs policy, well, there just isn't Hobbs, anything... Hobbs, huh? Well, now I know that much. And suppose you tell me who Hobbs is. Or was. I'll tell you all about it. And when I have, you can hop on another plane and go right on back to Hartford. And all at your own expense. I still don't see whatever made you come out here, Johnny. Apparently the Hobbs matter. So start telling me. Well, come on, Jake. Come on. All right, Johnny. All right. Elmer P. Hobbs. Real estate in Los Angeles. Came over to the Lake Mojave Resort about two weeks ago. Spent a few days fishing with his old pal, the guide they have there. You mean Red? Red Barron? Yeah. Well, okay, go on. And then Tuesday, a week ago, he rented one of the boats and went out by himself. Apparently, he went up to a place called the Big Basin. Yeah, I know it well. The lake's three or four miles wide up there. Yeah, well, that afternoon, a big wind came up. Regular screamer. All the other boats came back to the landing, and all but Mr. Hobbs. Oh. The next morning, when the wind died down, they found his body. Walked up on the shore on the Nevada side. That's all? That's all. You say a claim has been filed. That's right, by one of his two beneficiaries. Who? Oh. His business partner back in L.A., Mr. Stuart Manley. I've passed the claim, and the company will pay it. No investigation of any kind? Oh, of course there was. Johnny, the Kingman Police, the Sheriff's Office, and the County Coroner. Accidental death due to drowning. So that's it, Johnny. Now you just make your reservation back to Hartford at that window right over there, and you are paying the freight. Oh, not so fast, Jake. I'm sticking around. Well, now you, you can see for yourself there's no reason for you to be here, much less at company expense. Well, after all, now that I am here, it'd be kind of silly not to run down to the lake. Well, you mean just to do some fishing on your own time. You want to drive me down there? Johnny. Yeah? Johnny, do you know something about the Hobbs case that I don't and the police, and the sheriff. Jake, I don't know a thing about it. Okay, Johnny. How do you want me to fix that crow you're going to eat? Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Our flag now numbers 50 stars. And behind each star, there stands yet another flag representing one of the 50 states. Vermont's state flag, in its early form, imitated our national flag, uniquely bearing 17 stripes and 17 stars, with only the inscribed word Vermont to distinguish it. The good people of Vermont assumed, as did our national government, that stripes as well as stars would be added as each new state entered the Union. Vermont entered the Union after Tennessee and Ohio, and with Kentucky to join shortly, the Vermonters naturally put 17 stripes on their flag. In 1818, the United States Congress put a stop to this, and since then, the stripes have always been at 13, and only stars are added for each new state. Vermont's present flag captures the famous beauty of the Green Mountain State in its coat of arms, And inscribed is the phrase, Vermont, Freedom and Unity. Vermont's state flag, the flag of the 14th state to enter the Union, was adopted on April 26, 1923. And now, Act Two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Mojave Red Matter. Elmer P. Hobbs of Los Angeles had died of drowning when his small boat capsized in a high wind on Lake Mojave. At least that's what Jake Kessler, his insurance agent, told me. Accident pure and simple, he said, and I could hire myself back to Hartford and forget about it. But I didn't. Simply because of the phone call I'd received from Old Red Barrett, fishing guide at Lake Mojave Resort. I persuaded Jake to drive me over there on the excuse that as long as I was nearby, I might as well do some fishing. So he dropped me off, and since it was after midnight, went on back to Kingman. I wandered on down to the dock and boathouse. Hello? Who's that? Ham. Huh? Johnny? 
Johnny Dollar? Yeah. Johnny Dollar? Hi. What are you doing here? Hi, Ham. Hey. You know darn well what he's doing here, Ham. The fishing has never been better. <laughs> Only how'd you get the word? And how are you, John? Oh, just great, Busty. Did you stop by the office let Marilyn fix you up with a room? No, no, because as I recall, old Red usually sleeps here on the dock. Oh, Red. Well, why do you say it that way, Buster? Because Ham and I are wasting good sleeping time down here, wondering why he hasn't come in yet. You mean he's still out on the lake? Yes, crazy But it's old... as black as the ace of spades out there. And no moon tonight. Buster and I were about to take off and about to look for him. He pulled his very same stunt night before last. We finally found him drifting around about nine miles up. <laughs> he said he'd run out of gas. Showed his empty tank to prove it. Yeah, but we knew better. What do you mean, Buster? I mean, when he saw us coming after him, he dumped out what gas he had. Oil slick all over the lake. If somebody'd struck a match, why? You know, Red's been doing a lot of crazy things this past week or so. Ever since his old friend, Mr. Hobbs, died, they were pretty close. And that is why he phoned me. Red phoned yeah, you? Yeah, early this morning. And if you ask me, it's because he doesn't believe Mr. Hobbs' death was accidental. Johnny, you know something? I didn't quite believe it myself. Well, sure, we have some pretty big winds on the lake now and then, and it was a big one that day. Yeah, and then when the coroner and the other authorities, well... Well, who's to argue with them? Do you know if Red has found out anything? Anything at all? All we know is he's given up taking out fishing parties and spends all his time prowling around the lake every day. And night. Says if he can find the boat Mr. Hobbs used... What kind of a boat was it? One of our regular rentals, an aluminum Arkansas traveler. Yeah, with a ten-horse Johnson on it. Well, listen. Those boats have flotation tanks. Why, yeah. So even if it did capsize, it wouldn't sink? You're right, Johnny. And there's been no sign of it... Not at all. Then let's go up to the lake and find Red. Except for the stars far overhead, the night was black as ink. And the 50-horse outboard skimmed us along at better than 30 miles an hour. Believe me, it was a strange feeling, almost like flying through space. How Buster found his way around the islands, rocky points and reefs, I'll never know, but he did. Throw your flashlight over to the left, Ham. It ought to be about even with Sculpture Rock. Yep, there it is. And we're coming into the big basin. Will you please tell me how you ever expect to find Red in all this darkness? Oh, don't worry about him. He hears us coming. He'll signal by striking a match or something. Sure, Johnny. No matter how crazy you are, you never let somebody wander around in the dark looking for you out here. Red knows that because he's had to come out and hunt for too many people at night himself. Ham, look. Yeah? On the east shore. I'm swinging over there. Hey, you're right. There's a fire on the beach. Yeah, it must be red. What's she doing out here? We'll soon find out. Hang on. Well, all I have to say is you took long enough to bring Johnny up here. Red, you old reprobate. What under the sun are you up to this time? I just told you. I've been waiting for you to bring Johnny. Now you can leave us and go on back to the dock. And I thank you very much. Red, we're not leaving until we find out what this is all about. And if I tell you, would you promise to leave us alone? Sure, sure. We'll promise anything. Oh, you see, I need Johnny's help. Yes, well... Because with him to follow up what I found today... Well, Johnny, you and I are going to prove that my old friend Mr. Hobbs was murdered. Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Every American fighting man has heard the expression, above and beyond the call of duty. How many of us have sat down and considered just what that word duty means? According to one dictionary definition, duty is man's conduct as required by his station or occupation, and that to which he is bound by moral obligation to do or not to do. When a man does more than his duty requires, he becomes more of a man in the eyes of his fellow men. One such was Captain John Philip Cromwell, commander of the submarine USS Sculpin, flagship of a submarine-coordinated attack group of the United States Navy. Possessing secret intelligence information of our fleet movements, strategy, tactics, and attack plans, Captain Cromwell led his attack group and patrol of enemy waters around Truck Island 
in November 1943, just prior to the launching of our first large-scale offensive in the Pacific. Despite savage enemy opposition, he established a line of submarines around the enemy-held stronghold of Truk until his ship, the Sculpin, became so rocked and battered by depth bombs that he ordered it to the surface. He engaged the enemy with deck guns, giving his crew an opportunity to abandon the mortally stricken ship. Determined to sacrifice himself, rather than risk capture and the subsequent danger of revealing the secret plans to the enemy, Captain Cromwell remained aboard the Sculpin as she plunged to her death. He thereby preserved the security of the mission at the cost of his own life. Captain Cromwell earned the Medal of Honor for deep integrity and uncompromising devotion to the call of duty in the service of his country. But what he did defined the word duty better than any dictionary. And now, Act Three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Mojave Red Matter. <laughs> I'll tell you this, Johnny. Red here is one of the wildest, most irresponsible old characters I know when he wants to be. But he's okay nonetheless. And if he thinks you and he can find proof that Mr. Hobbs was murdered, well, he must have a good reason for it. Well, Red? Oh, now, Ham, do you think a man like Elmer Hobbs, knowing the lake the way he did, would ever let the big wind catch him off guard up here in the basin? No, no, I don't, Red. I know that's the way Buster felt about it, too. Well, I said that to you myself, Red. But now, what's this proof you have of murder? Well, uh, Ham and Buster, aren't you going on back now that I've told you why I wanted you to bring Johnny here? Was there any harm in our knowing what you found, Red? After all, we might be able to help you and Johnny. Yeah, I thought about that, but you see, I might just possibly be wrong about... Well, I might just be wrong. And I wouldn't want to be ashamed in front of a lot of people. By a lot, you mean three. Well, that's three times as many as just Johnny here. Oh, well, now look, Oh, Johnny, he means it, so Ham and I are going back to the dock. But I still don't see what difference... Johnny, when you get to know Red as well as we do, you'll stop trying to figure out the whys and wherefores of some of the things he does and what makes him tick. But you'll also learn that in the long run, no matter how unorthodox some of those things are, well... Oh, come on, Buster. All right. See you when you get back to dock, Johnny. Oh, you got some food, Red? Now, you know I always keep something in my boat, Buster. Okay. Well, far be it from me, Red, but all I have to say is that whatever you think you've found proof of, it sure better be something. Oh, it is, Johnny. At least I think it is. Now, you just scrunch yourself a place to sleep in the sand. It's pretty late. Huh? Well, it took you so long to get here, and we can't see anything in the dark anyway. Oh, now look, Red, for heaven's Good sake. Good night, Johnny. Sleep well. And that was the end of our conversation. And I began to wonder if Jake Kessler hadn't been right in the first place. If I hadn't come out here on a wild goose chase after all. But the more I wondered and thought about it, with nothing but the warm desert night about us, and the twinkling stars, the magic sound of fish jumping in the lake, the sleepier I got. So, I slept. The smell of bacon frying over the campfire awakened me, although the sun still hadn't shone over the mountains that bordered the eastern side of the lake. Douse your face in the lake, Johnny. Then grab yourself some of this bacon and egg. I did as I was told. Then, squatting in the sand in front of the fire, stuffed away a hearty breakfast of bacon, eggs, and pancakes made from sourdough. And you know, there's something about a meal cooked over a campfire that, well, we had other things to do. So we climbed into Red's old aluminum boat and slowly drove up the lake, staying close to shore. Finally, we reached a small, rocky cove. Right here is the spot, Johnny. This little cove. The spot for what, Red? You know, you still haven't told me. You see there? You see where somebody has climbed up the rocks? No, but I'll take your word for it. Well, he couldn't have climbed up off of the water, so he must have climbed out of a boat. So? And there's footprints leading away across the desert. And Johnny... They aren't Elmer Hobbs' footprints, no, sir. So somebody climbed out of a boat here for one reason or another and took a walk into the desert. The man who killed Elmer Hobbs. What makes you think so? Look down over the side, in the water. A yeah, boat sunk down there. That's the boat that Elmer had. Can you see it clear? Yes, very. Then you can see it wasn't damaged enough to sink it. 
Not that bold. You're right, Red. Particularly since it has flotation tanks. But it's down there. It's sunk. Well, you better strip to your shorts, Johnny. Yeah. I'll go down and take a look. Me? I already have. But I want you to look, Johnny. And remember, I knew everything that Elmer had in his boat when he left the dock. Remember that. Okay. And you're sure the footprints leading into the desert couldn't possibly have been made by Mr. Hobbs? That I'll swear to you, Johnny, by all that's good and holy. All right. Now then. Now slip in easy so you won't disturb the water too much. I took a deep breath, surface dived, and swam down to the sunken boat. And the water was clear, and I could see plainly. And I saw that Red was right. I bobbed back to the surface. Did you see him? The cut? Yeah, Red. Those flotation tanks were slashed open with an axe or a sharp, heavy tool of some kind. But Elmer had no axe on that boat. So it was somebody else, Johnny. Somebody who murdered him. Yeah. And then sank the boat. Red, I'm afraid you're right. Elmer Hobbs was murdered. So there you have it, Jake. And if I were you, I'd call off payment on that claim immediately. Granted, the case isn't over yet. I still have the job of finding out who killed Elmer Hobbs. But you know something? You're going to have to wait for my next report. Meantime, expense account total to the moment, $159.20, including the cost of shooting and retrieving one crow. Jake, how would you like it cooked? Until the next report, then, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. star will return in just a moment. Our flag now numbers 50 stars, and behind each star there stands yet another flag representing one of the 50 states. Oklahoma's state flag depicts an Osage warrior's circular buckskin shield from which hang seven eagle feathers. Across the shield is the Indian's calumet, or pipe of peace, crossed with the white man's peace symbol, the olive branch. On the shield are small crosses, the Indian's graphic sign for stars, indicating lofty ideals or a purpose for high endeavor. The background of the flag is a field of blue, the blue of the Oklahoma sky, signifying loyalty and devotion. The important symbols, however, are the calumet and the olive branch. These override the shield, the symbol of war, and bespeak a predominant love of peace by a united people. Oklahoma state flag, the flag of the 46th state to enter the Union, was adopted on April 2nd, 1925. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week? Well, after all, the case isn't really closed. But it will be next week, believe me. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote today's story. Heard in our cast were Lucille Meredith, Horace Lewis, Harley Bear, Alan Reed, and Barney Phillips. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for the conclusion of this exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Roy Rowan speaking. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.